Good evening. What's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in on this Saturday evening, July 3rd, 2021, 821 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the globe, a 4.7 earthquake striking out here in the South America region. This comes after two 6.0 earthquakes striking the Chile area. Uh, and after that 2.7, we had a 5.6 a lot of increase in pressure and activity along the North American continent here. Pay very close attention to that activity. Uh, quite the heightened earthquake movement today. Not just one, as I mentioned, but two 6.0 earthquakes in the Peru-Chile trench area, subduction zone. Major player right here when it comes to producing mega quakes. In fact, the world's largest earthquake struck here. 1964, I think. So w what happens when we get two six pointers and it looks like a 4.7 far as like the uh, aftershock activity goes. Is there really a main quake yet? Is there a main quake? I don't think so. I think we're still watching this area for potentially further larger scale movement. Uh, over the past week, past few days, I should say, there was some significant deep movement into this area of South America. Deep movement ultimately resulting in backup buildup pressure along the subduction zone where it subducts here with, between these two plates. That's where you build up locked areas of high of high amount of energy and pressure. And I believe uh, it's possible we could see something a little bit more on the larger size here. It's very possible. So be on guard South America region. Uh, some movement up here to the north off the coast. Of Mexico a 5.6 striking uh, just off the coast there 46 kilometers down the dip of this area I can't remember the middle of America trench at the northern end right up here you can see this trench line right up here in the north and pretty deep 50, uh, 46 kilometers so you look at the bigger picture folks very quiet out here to the southwest of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Uh, down through Samoa, New Zealand area, Solomon Islands, pretty quiet. Little bit of movement, just a little bit of movement here in the Japan area. We've been seeing fours bounce back and forth here for quite a while. Let's go ahead and check out the seven days. Uh, and you can see all these fours ramping up here in this area. But we still haven't seen any significant major release of pressure in this region for months. I still think this is possibly on guard uh, for, for seeing a, a potential mega quake soon, very soon. But uh, with all this activity over here right now, we're kind of fo focusing on the South America region and uh, North American plate up here. Be on guard. A lot of movement into Northern or Southern California, I should say. This is just the 2.5 and above over the last 24, uh, over the last 24 hours. You can see movement ramping up. Uh, what do we got there? Uh, 3.7, the latest quake near Los Banos. Uh, five kilometers below the surface. Some movement on the creeping section here. A little three, uh, what is that? 3.3. And some further movement on the Pacific side and the North American side of this plate boundary known as the San Andreas Fault, that dark red line there. Let's go ahead and check out the all magnitudes. We get a little bit better uh, view of what's going on on the micro uh, quake level seeing a pretty good increase around where these three pointers struck down through the San Jacinto fault area nothing too much on the Salton Sea side down here along the Brawley seismic zone uh, but it's something to watch very closely uh, kind of right now we're just uh, you can see all the activity has died down up here to the north lack of activity in the Intermountain West region uh, kind of concerning Southern California, I believe, on, is on, uh, on spot here for potential further movement. Just looking at the graphs that we've seen over the last couple hours of this movement. You know, and I'm, I'm a firm believer one part of the plate affects the other. Uh, and the movement of the plates give a general idea of a directional uh, transfer of pressure, so to speak. And that's been, been saying that for quite a while. It's been uh, a lot of people mention that transfer of pressure and plate transfers. Um, and it's, uh, it, I believe it 
Can we predict it 100% that there's going to be a, a, a pretty good sized earthquake here in Southern Cal? I can't, but you got to look at the wide scale view regionally um, along these plates here. This is not the Pacific plate over here, but it's uh Well, these earthquakes right here are taking place on the Peru-Chile Trench. But the Pacific Plate as a whole looks pretty active up here to the north. Very active. This one here, 5. Point, oh, did they just drop that? I could have swore it was a 5.7. I guess they did. I guess they did. Okay, but still, that's still a pretty good-sized earthquake uh, for that region. And it comes shortly thereafter, the two six-pointers that struck these six pointers struck, uh, looks like about half an hour or so, uh, between each other and in the same general location of one another. So I don't believe we're done. Just be on guard here. Be on guard. These could be four shakes. This is something that we've seen in Japan. We've seen sixes and stuff like that. And then we've seen the mega quake happen, uh, with that nine pointer off the coast of Japan a few years ago. You know, these, these quakes, these larger quakes, when they happen right after one another, it's an obvious sign of some mega buildup of pressure happening in that region. So just be on guard. Be on guard, folks. Hawaii, not a whole lot going on. Still looking pretty active along the southeast flank, folks, but nothing further uh, on the uh, movement there. I do want to cover Yellowstone National Park real quick. There's still continued activity. Kind of got my eye set on this movement right here once again. See this little cluster of quakes? Let's make sure this is the uh, correct date. 7-3, right? We've been seeing this. It seems like every day or so. Um, and I believe these are earthquakes. Because they're showing up on other seismic stations. I'm not for sure what's going on here. But it's mostly around the Maple Creek area, Hebgen Lake. Yes, there's confirmed earthquakes. You can see them very dramatically here on these graphs, lines spiky line so to speak registering earthquakes on the micro uh, quake level there's the six pointers that struck see those <clears throat> those are the signature of the six pointers that struck in south america it's a distant quake it's not localized localized would be a sharp spike if a six pointer struck here in yellowstone national park this graph would be crazy looking but this is very distant but still strong enough to show up on seismograph stations there in Yellowstone National Park. And there's two of them. Two of them, about half an hour a piece or uh, apart. And they look they look very similar in size. So yes, I believe they were both uh, six pointers that struck. There's another earthquake that came in there. I believe that is going to be the 5.6. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I just got back from Mount Lassen again. Uh, went up there with Missy Mimi's and we hiked uh, a couple trails but I'm a little bit sunburnt <laughs> and worn out. It's pretty tiring. So here is another map. There's those two six pointers and there is that 5.6 in, uh, or just off the coast of Mexico. This is showing up roughly about the same size as those six pointers because of location to this seismograph there in Yellowstone National Park. This is much closer. The Mexico quake is much closer than the South America quakes. Even though it's smaller magnitude, um, the difference in location distance wise is uh, uh, accounting for the uh, size of that 5.6 5 on that map. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of movement going on folks. And, and this is all coming after a uh, pretty strong solar flare that struck uh, way earlier this morning. produced a X 1.5 flare. That's pretty uh, significant. I believe it's the uh, first one, X flare, in four years or so. Shows that the sun is starting to wake up a little bit. And I, I'm a pretty firm believer in activity on the sun affecting what's going here on what's going on here on Earth. There it is, first X flare in four years, right? Still looks like there's a possibility of uh, um, some further solar flare activity, 55% for class M 
X flare at 25% over the next 24, uh, 48 hours, 15%. So possibility is still there to see a little bit further, sp more sparking from the sun, so to speak. Let's check out the uh, trimmer map here uh, real quick here. I'm, I'm waiting on something big tonight. I just have that feeling in my head. Or it could be heat stroke coming on. I don't know. Uh, trimmer map. There is the trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. Back, back into southwestern parts of Oregon right there again. Looking at 184 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. Be on guard, folks. I mean, this is uh, you know, when we see this type of movement, two six pointers in a small in a in a major area of seismic buildup and stress, such as the Peru Chile Trench, you know, that's something to pay attention to. Be on guard out there in South America. Okay, I'm not gonna say it again. Definitely pay attention. Um, and like I said, far as earthquake activity in the northern uh, states here, Washington, Oregon, look like they have dramatically dropped off. USGS uh, not reporting all those earthquakes that you've seen on the Yellowstone uh, thumbnails map overview. Uh, actually, they show nothing right now. Uh, for a while, they were right on top of it, but it uh, looks like over the last 24 hours, no, they're not reporting any of those earthquakes taking place at Yellowstone National Park. Be on guard, folks. Stay safe. Um, a lot of stuff happening right now around the globe. The sun's picking up in activity, and uh, just uh, be safe out there. We will be out here on the live stream kind of monitoring a little bit. Uh, make sure you enjoy your Saturday evening, and we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.